There are always series that simply go way too far. What is for some just good entertainment is for others a huge scandal and a reason to immediately switch off. In this video, we will present you 8 famous series that went way too far. Included are TV shows where even medical professionals demanded the immediate cancellation and episodes that were so extreme that they disappeared from TV forever. So be sure to stay tuned here at Wonderlane. Let's start our list with a series that is extremely popular, but also regularly causes heated controversy. We're talking about Family Guy, of course. Hardly any other series regularly gets so much headwind. There are even some episodes that were never aired because they simply went way too far. The episode, A Star of David in the Sky, also triggered fierce criticism. In the episode, head of the family Peter is totally burnt out financially and converts to Judaism because he believes it would give him an economic advantage. It was a subject that simply went way too far for many people. Even 20th Century Fox, the production company of the series, initially refused to air the episode. Especially the song, I Need a Jew, which Peter performed in the series, almost cost them a lot of money. The song is in fact a parody of the song, When You Wish Upon a Star, from Disney's Pinocchio, and the rights holders of the song sued 20th Century Fox. They believed that the version from Family Guy would be so negative and harmful that the song would completely lose its charm and they even wanted to go to court. In the end, they dropped the lawsuit, but the episode is still one of the most controversial of the whole show. We continue with a series about four nerdy scientists and a blonde waitress who lives just across the street. Of course, everyone thinks we're talking about the Big Bang Theory, but actually, we're not. We're talking about the series The Theorist, which aired in Belarus. Yes, you heard it right. In Belarus, there is a series that is said to have brazenly copied the Big Bang Theory from the US, and of course, went way too far with it. Not only the content of the series was taken over one-to-one, -one, but also the different characters can easily be assigned to Sheldon, Leonard, and company, just by their clothing style. Even Sheldon's brown leather sofa is in the imitated Blatt share living room. In addition, the white Russian physicists named Sheldon, Leo, Hovard, and Raj also live in close proximity to the pretty waitress Natasha, who strongly resembles Penny. Even the theme song and opening credits are a copy of the original. Series creator Chuck Lore was stunned, but did not take legal action. Because even though the idea theft is obvious, he and the legal department saw no chance of winning in court. The production company behind The Theorists is said to be owned by the Belarusian government and is therefore virtually untouchable. We continue with the US series 13 Reasons Why, currently available on Netflix streaming service. The series, which is based on the novel of the same name, caused controversial discussions even before the first season was broadcast. It clearly went too far for many people, and pediatricians and adolescents even called for its immediate cancellation. But what is the show actually about? The series deals with the main character, Hannah, who takes her own life out of sheer desperation. In the course of the show, the question is finally addressed as to what terrible events drove Hannah to take such a dramatic step. Critics accused the creators of the series that the topics dealt with were far too violent, especially Hannah's demise would be shown far too explicitly according to critics. They even wanted to prevent the broadcast, but the makers of 13 Reasons Why defended their series. They were of the opinion that the scene in question would deter rather than entice other young people to imitate it. Nevertheless, Netflix took the criticism very seriously and inserted a warning to help numbers before the start of each episode. The controversial scene was also re-edited later in post-production. In the meantime, only a heavily edited version can be seen on Netflix. Next up, we move on to Breaking Bad. The series about chemistry teacher Walter White and his former student Jesse Pinkman has given its fans many memorable scenes, but hardly any has such a cult status as the pizza toss from season 3. In the scene mentioned, Brian Cranston, aka Walter White, throws a family pizza onto the roof of his house out of frustration. Actually, a rather harmless scene in the series, but for one particular woman, this moment clearly went way too far. And that 
woman is Frances Padilla, the actual resident of the famous house in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Ever since the episode with the pizza toss first aired, she hasn't led a normal life. Time and again, complete strangers show up in front of her home, take pictures, steal things from her garden, or throw pizzas on her roof. One weekend, there were reportedly over 100 people in front of her house, and she had to remove countless pizzas from her roof. The situation got so out of control that even the producers and actors of the series had to intervene. They asked fans to stop throwing pizzas at the woman's house, but the situation kept getting worse. Meanwhile, the house owner has had a 1.8 meter high fence erected and she hopes that she will finally be in peace. Let's continue with a show that never caused any controversy in front of the camera, but is said to have caused a lot of trouble behind the scenes. We're talking about The Ellen DeGeneres Show. The entertainer, with an estimated fortune of $330 million, is actually committed to human rights. She has even been a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom since 2016, one of the two highest civilian honors in the United States. But none of that fits with the accusations that were made about her show last year. Namely, more than 35 former employees had publicly made serious allegations. They spoke of a toxic work environment, harassment, racism, and bullying on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Although most of the accusations revolved around the show's producers, Ellen DeGeneres herself also came in for heavy criticism. Her nice manner in front of the camera was said to be just an act. These accusations simply went too far. Ellen DeGeneres finally apologized to all employees as well as to the audience and the accused persons were dismissed. We continue with Two and a Half Men, another of Chuck Lorre's series creations. The series was broadcast in over 40 countries and fans remained loyal for 12 seasons, but critics of the series were happy when the last episode finally aired in 2015, because for them, the series clearly went too far. They even called the series a bad gentleman joke on Continuous Loop and accused the series of exclusively depicting sexist stereotypes. They also criticized that the entire humor of the series is based on sexism and chauvinism. According to critics, the women in the series are reduced exclusively to their looks, while the male protagonists are primarily interested in alcohol and landing in bed with as many women as possible. Male protagonists who did not conform to this image would be insulted and ridiculed. For many viewers, this took the humor of the series way too far. Even Angus T. Jones, who played Alan's son Jake in the series, turned his back on the show, calling it filth. He even advised against watching the show on television. On our number three is a series that also triggered a heated debate even before it was broadcasted. We're talking about the series Insatiable, which ran on the streaming service Netflix in 2018. The series is about the teenager Patty, who is bullied and put down by her environment because of her excess weight. When she loses a massive amount of weight after an incident, she takes revenge on everyone who has ever heard her. Critics were shocked by the subject matter, and for them the series clearly went too far. Among other things, they accused the producers of fat shaming, and it was feared that the TV series would lead to eating disorders in young girls. Therefore, they started a petition to prevent the start of the series or to cancel the series immediately. Over 236,000 people signed the petition and Insatiable was also extremely slated in the press. But Netflix initially held on to the series and even profited from the controversial coverage. The producers also defended the show and called it a satire. After two years, however, it was all over. Netflix unexpectedly ended the series after the second season. Let's move on to another series that, according to critics, repeatedly crosses the line of good taste. But with its excursion to Rio de Janeiro, The Simpsons caused plenty of bad blood in Brazil, even antagonizing the country's president at the time. But let's start from the beginning. In the episode, It's All Lisa's Fault, The Simpsons travel to Brazil to look for Lisa's missing pen pal, Ronaldo. In the process, the creators left out no offensive prejudice. The country is shown as dirty and infested with rats, and the Brazilians are portrayed as criminals. In addition, the makers mistakenly confused Brazilian culture with Latin American culture, which caused real anger in Brazil. Eventually, even the Brazilian Tourism Authority took notice of the Simpsons episode and threatened to sue 20th Century Fox for the negative portrayal. After all, they had just invested 
$18 million in an image campaign that was ruined by The Simpsons. The lawsuit idea was dropped, but Fox publicly distanced itself from the episode's content and executive producer James L. Brooks personally apologized to Rio de Janeiro. That's it for our video. Feel free to let us know in the comments which series went too far for you or if you can think of another shocking series moment. Otherwise, like this video if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time here at Wonderlane.